Hi everyone, in this video we are going to briefly introduce the uh, design study in SOLIDWORKS. So let's say you have this part here and this part has four major dimensions, the depth, uh, width, height and the radius or diameter of this hole in the middle and you're going to put this part under a tensile force. You're going to fix one side, you're going to apply a force on the other side, create a stress. And the goal is to change one or two parameters, one of or two dimensions of this part. And uh, the goal here is a design study, which, for example, let's say the goal, the cost function is to minimize the weight, which of course can be translated to minimizing cost, while at the same time keeping stress below some threshold or keeping safety factor above some threshold, right? So while still the design is safe, you try to minimize the cost by uh, basically changing some parameters and see which one of them can provide the optimal solution. So if we want to use the stress analysis results, like safety factor, one minus stress, and so on, first, we need to do a static uh, stress analysis test on the part. So we go to simulation, we go to new steady, and then we use the static analysis first. And here we can add a fixture, right? And we can add the... Um, uh, force so let's say I want to apply a clamp here right and fix that face so it doesn't move and then I can go on the other face and I can apply what I can apply the force I can apply uh, pressure I can apply ther thermal load or any other thing so for the moment let's say I just want to apply a tensile force on this uh, side here and let's say I want it to be negative 30,000 Newton negative to reverse the direction and make it tensile, right? So this is the force I have. That is the uh, boundary condition or fixed geometry. And then you can change the control. Uh, you can change the size of the mesh or the way that the part is meshed. So you can right click here and go to create a mesh. And you can change the mesh density, very fine density, very coarse density right you can go to mesh parameters and make it to be curve based mesh which is better than the standard mesh right and so on and so forth so now you see this is the mesh that i have if it's not appropriate you can change the mesh we discussed it in simulation in solidworks so when you have stress concentration you better apply a smaller mesh at least locally here so let's say this is for now good enough. And so I run the study to get me the strain, stresses, and the displacements. So right now you see these are one minus the stresses. If you want to have them in PSI or instead of Pascal, you can go ahead and right click here, go to definition and change the units of them, right? From Pascal to PSI. If you want to change the stress to anything else, principal stress, shear stress, normal stress in any direction, right? You can do all of that. So let's say this is good enough. I also, as I said, I want to focus on safety factor, right? So let's say my goal is safety factor is not below a specific number. So safety factor is typically not one of the default results that static analysis calculates, but you can ask uh, SOLIDWORKS to add that to your results. So you go here and then you say uh, define the uh, factor of safety plot and you can select which parts to be um, selected for factor of safety and then you say how you want the factor of safety to be. Is it automatic? Is it max one minus stress or uh, so on? Let's say if it's one, uh, max one minus stress so you choose that and then it calculates the factor of safety for you. As you can see, the minimum safety factor for me is 0.75 and the maximum safety factor for me is about 13.86, um, right? So this is the safety factor that I have and stress and everything else. Now, let's say, as I said, I want to do a design study. So now that I'm done with the static study, now I go to new study and now I
go to what? I go to design study. Now in the design study, you have variables that you need to define, you have constraints that you need to define, and then you have goals or cost functions that you need to define, and then it does some optimization for you. So let's say the variable that I need to choose, I left click here and say add a parameter, and now here you can choose any of the major dimensions of the part that you want to change. Let's say the thickness of the part is what I care about, right? So here it says uh, the model dimension, the value the, uh, right now is 30, give it a name, I call it T for thickness. And this is the parameter that I want to change. Here it gives you a range over which range you want to change it. Let's say I want to change it from uh, 10 to, let's say 100. Yeah, that's good enough. And then you can say uh, it changes uh, T from one, uh, 10 to 100 in what increment or what step? Let's say 10 millimeter increment at a time. Then it says, do you have any constraints? And you say, yes, I do. What is it? You're going to add a sensor for that. And here, instead of mass properties, you go to simulation data. And instead of stress, you say what? I want the factor of safety, right? The minimum in the model. And you choose that and it says, okay, do you want it to be less than one? Do you want it to be bigger than something? And I say, yes, I want it to be greater than, and I want it to be greater than two. So make sure that minimum safety factor in the part is greater than two. That's the constraint that I have, the hard constraint. And then what's my goal here? My goal is I want to go to mass properties and I want to reduce the mass of the overall part. And it says, what do you want to do to it? Minimize it, maximize it, make it close to something. It's a minimize it because mass means cost. So let's minimize the cost. At the same time, be sure that safety factor is not going below two. And uh, my parameter of control is the thickness. So now I say, go ahead and do the optimization for me. It forms a table and goes from value to value to value and checks. So you see initial uh, value of 10, it started. It gives you a red. Red means it uh, violated the constraints, right? Because constraint was safety factor minimal two. And you see safety factor here is 0.24. This is 0.94. This is point. 49, sorry, 0.74, and so on. So any cell, any number that it shows red, it means it is violating the constraint. Forget it. It cannot be a solution. And below that, it also shows the mass, as you can see. This is the mass of the part for the material that you selected. I selected 1060 aluminum and for the dimensions that you have selected. The only dimension it is changing is the thickness. And you see it is changing thickness in each iteration, right? If you look in the back, if you look at the CAD model, right, the thickness of the block is changing. And still my safety factor is not above, 10, above two, so still not good, maybe next time. There we go. Now it's slightly above two, correct? That's the mass of the part, four kilogram. And the parameter for it, the thickness should be 80 mil. Now it goes to higher thickness. Of course, higher thickness means better safety factor, but I don't need it. And it means more mass, which is not my goal. And 100, the same thing. So my ideal solution should be 80 mil. And you'll see it is going to mark it in three. See? So when it's done, it's going to mark the optimal solution. And optimal solution is definitely what? The one that has the minimi minimum cost function the way I define it and still satisfying the constraints. So which thickness do I need? 80 mil. And you can see that already it has changed it to 80 mil. And this is the amount of thickness that you need to have for this design. So here I just make it a little bit more complicated. I choose two variables. I make it a, a multivariable cost function, right? So here 
I when I add the parameter, one of them is going to be this guy, which I call T. The other one that I can add is going to be the next one. I call it height. And that is going to be this uh, 100 mil. The important thing that I wanted to mention for you is this. If that dimension is related to a, a parameter, to a formula, it's called a driven dimension, you cannot choose it to be a parameter of choice. Okay, so keep that in mind that that dimension should be free to move. It cannot be a driven dimension, right? So here I can go to my equations and if I have uh, parameters and if I have formulas, I can go ahead and uh, delete them and basically set those dimensions and those parameters free to change. If they are driven, they are not going to be a good choice. I'm going to choose the height of the part, this 100, also as another parameter and call it H. So I choose H. Now this is not driven. I can easily choose it to be changing. And then here I'm going to set the ranges for each parameter, min, max, and the increment. So let's say I want my thickness to change from, let's say, uh, 40 mil to, um, let's say, 90 mil. And then I want the height to also go from 50 mil to 150 mil with increment of 25. So it is going to take over, or let's just make it 50. So the H is going to have three scenarios and then T, which is going to go from 40 to, uh, let's say, 90 correct then if i choose a step size of 10 this is going to be uh, five scenarios or six scenarios actually so six times three is 18 there are 18 you see total scenarios that it is going to uh, do the optimization for and my constraint again is that the factor of safety here should not be uh, any less than two. So I want it to be greater than two. I can add a, another constraint if I want, right? Let's say I want to add another sensor and I can go to, uh, let's say again, simulation data and say not only the safety factor should not be more than specific things, also the dimensional the requirements of my part does not allow, let's say, the um, strain to be also, let's say, I don't want it to be uh, bigger than something. So my constraint is, my strain is less than so much. And if we look at my statics result, the values of the strain were 4.27 times e to the negative 4 max and then 2.74 e to the negative 5 min. So if I go back here, I say it is less than, let's say, uh, 10 to the negative 4, correct, which is this guy. So I want it to be less than that. The part cannot have a strain bigger than that because then the dimension of it will not... Uh, work for the uh, room that this part has in the whole assembly, correct? So I have two constraints, I have two parameters to change, and my goal is, let's say, instead of mass properties, I can say costing data, and uh, as I said, mass translates to cost, but let's say I want to have the total cost here, right? And I want to minimize that. And now, again, I can run it. It has to go over 18 scenarios. It has to check two constraints to see if they are violated or not. And then it has to minimize the cost. Now, here it is considering a cost for that material per volume and multiplies by the volume. And you can see here it is changing the heights. Right now, it's just changing the thickness at a specific height and then 
changes the height to the next height for that height looks at all different t values and then repeats and then it is going to give me what the um, optimum solution so here I let it go through all scenarios because for each one of the scenarios it has to run the simulation one time with the same load, same fixture, same mesh size. And uh, so it is running that simulation 18 times here. And it turns out that none of the uh, values we chose except for the last one, which is the maximum size of 90 millimeter thickness and 150 millimeter for height will satisfy the solution. So there is only one solution here. And here, as you can see, um, the minimum safety factor is 3.88, which is more than two. And uh, the uh, strain is less than one times 10 to the negative four. So it's also satisfied. And the associated cost with it is 1.518, probably in dollars. So this is a basic brief intro to um, design study in SOLIDWORKS. Defining a goal, uh, goal or cost function, defining constraints, defining the um, optimization variables, and doing a um, simple example. So hopefully it was useful to you, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.